Well, good morning uh, and welcome to the Shepherd's Word Church. And uh, thank you for those who, who are here and those who are listening live online. Uh, it means so much to your Heavenly Father for Him to look and see you actually wanting to know what does His Word actually say. This beautiful book that He's given us, this beautiful letter, love letter that He has written to us, and it's so important in this day to know and understand what the revelation of Jesus Christ does say. Because as the Lord has said to us, the importance of this book, that blessed and happy are those who read and know the prophecy of this book. It's so very important. And so before we start, I want to uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we truly do love you, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that you have shown such great love towards us and in giving us this letter that, that you care about all those things that we are coming in contact with in these last days, the troubles that this world is going to encounter. And you have shown us the path through how we will be taken care of by you and the warnings that we need to have so that we will not be deceived. And Lord, we, we ask that you bless all those who have needs, Lord, that whether it is uh, problems in the family or health problems, you know their needs, Father. We ask that you bless them. And Lord, as, as we go through this book and we turn these pages and make known the words, we ask, Lord, that you teach us, Father, that you open eyes, that you open ears and make known, Father. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would be with me. Wrap around my spirit. And bring all things to my remembrance as we go through this, Lord. That, that, Lord, I cannot do the teaching. We ask, Lord, that you do the teaching. We thank you, Father, for all your blessings. In Jesus' precious name. So, amen. And so, in, in last week's study, we, we had uh, covered... Uh, chapter 17, which gave us a, a great overview of understanding all the kingdoms, those seven kingdoms that, that Satan would have on earth. And they, they begin back with, as we had covered, that first great Babylon that, uh, in the book of Genesis. And that was the, the mother, the, the one that, that all have have followed suit after the teachings and deceptions that Nimrod had given. Each great kingdom has, has followed suit through the, through the ages and the generations. After, after that uh, uh, great uh, Babylon, there was the Medo-Persian Empire. And then, then came Alexander the Great with the, the Greek Empire. And then the Roman Empire. And, and then we saw that the next, the next one that where it says that, that green horse, I know they translated it as pale horse, but that green horse that, that represents that kingdom that came in 636 AD. I think it was 636, maybe 634. Memory, uh, my memory is not perfect on that, but, but they took control of that, of that, uh, place on that mount, that rock, that holy place. And, and they held it until after the, uh, what originally was the League of Nations and it became the United Nations. And, and with that came the control of the good and the bad figs, those, those peoples that, that control that part of Jerusalem and that spot that is God's uh, most beloved spot, his favorite place uh, on the universe. And so this, 
this being that uh, sixth kingdom that God has shown us, it is the one that as it comes together and comes to full control, worldwide control, that when it receives the deadly wound, when it fails, because it will fail, that is when that wicked one, Satan, will come, deceiving the world, coming peaceably and prosperously, and uh, with his those words that are that are called flatteries, but they're actually words of fire, smoke, and brimstone. Great deception, deceiving the world, and the whole world will follow after him. But that brings us into this great system of commerce that that we're going to see uh, in chapter 18. And the Lord always gives us two witnesses. So uh, we're going to look and see where the Lord has told us long ago about all of these things. So if you'd come with me, I want to go to Revelation chapter 18. And we read, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory, bringing great light to And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. And so that's all encompassing that that first Babylon to this last Babylon, the great city that we see being built today as we watch, and all those kingdoms in between. Babylon the great is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So this great worldwide city that was that uh, it will be of great riches, and and uh, the whole world uh, will be uh, it buying and selling, and and there will be great materialism and people putting their hope in all the bargains of Satan. But it will become as just a little cage of of just unclean and hateful spirits. It the greatness will be gone, kind of like you see what was once a great city becomes a little ghost town. Three, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And this great idolatry, the the Lord uses the word fornication because that shows our Heavenly Father's true feelings about how much it hurts Him to see what the world is doing and what they are going to do in this coming kingdom, that he looks at it as fornication. And it actually is because you will see those who are not going to wait for the seventh seal, seventh trump and seventh vial for the true uh, Christ, for the true husband to come. But they will marry the one who comes at the sixth seal, sixth trump and sixth vial. And so for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth. Now those, the kings of the earth are those kings of, you'll see those uh, ten toes of partly clay and partly iron. These are those of clay. They are of the earth. They have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So we see this collusion of the kings of the earth and the great merchants of the earth. And look around. You see it happening today, you know, along with the, 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 uh, the COVID epidemic and whatnot. Who begin to really wax great but the great merchants of the earth? The little mom and pops, you see, they kind of went by the wayside there, putting them out of business. So this great collusion is happening. Four, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. And as we uh, covered that, uh, read over that last week, that's all our Heavenly Father is asking. Just come out of her, my people. Don't be caught up in the deception. You need, as God has told us, you need to have His name sealed in your forehead. His name is the Word of God. You must have His Word sealed into your forehead. And that way you will not be deceived to have the words 
of the false one sealed in your forehead. And his are represented by that 666, that great deception. So again, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Five, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. And yes, these sins have reached all the way to heaven. And that's why God says he's not going to shake earth only, but earth and heaven. There's going to be that final cleaning, cleansing, removing all sin, all wickedness, all rebellion, because we do not want to have these troublemakers with us through all eternity. This is going to be that one last great cleansing, removing all wickedness. Six, he says, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. And yes, she has rewarded us with great troubles in this life, destroying lives, destroying families. And uh, look at how the, uh, the these great kings of the earth, all the all the world leaders and the great merchants of the earth are ripping off God's children today. It's happening. God will reveal this to us very clearly in his word. All these things are not just happenstance. They just happen for no reason. It is foretold. This is God's word. So give to her double what she has done to his children. Seven, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen. She she has married the who she believes is the king, and that is Satan in that kingdom, that seventh kingdom that is coming when he heals that deadly wound. So she says, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Now we as Christians, we are widows. Our true husband, he died on the cross for us. And we have not yet had that great wedding feast, that marriage. And so we are a widow. We're, we are waiting for our true husband. But this one will not wait for the true husband. She will marry the false one. She will love the deception, those flatteries and the fire, the words of fire, smoke and brimstone that tickles her ears. She will love it. And so the main thing is learn God's word. Be prepared for this time that we are in. This is a time that the prophets would have loved to have seen, but the Lord chose for you and I to be here. Eight, therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judges her. And yes, we are all going to be tested. All our works are going to be tested, uh, burned with fire and tested to see if they are of gold or silver or bronze or they maybe they're of wood or straw. Hers will be, there will be no gold in her works. It will be all straw. It will burn up. Now, I want to go to Isaiah and because looking at this, not waiting for the true husband. I want to go to Isaiah chapter 54. And I'm, I'm going to uh, read verses 1 through 7. And then the Lord given us the, the, uh, the hope, along with the warning, the hope that we wait for our true husband. 54 verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. And, and you know, he uses... Uh, the uh, that spiritually being married to that false one and 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 carrying and supporting his ministry as nursing a child, giving birth and nursing a child. He uses that likeness. So he says, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud that thou didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolator 
than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. So there's more of those who will marry the false one than there are of us who will wait for the true Christ. The whole world is going to be deceived by his great deceptions. So let, let us wait for our true Lord. And let's go to Luke for another witness. Luke chapter 23. And uh, I'm going to pick it up with uh, verse 27. But this is where uh, Christ, he has been beaten. He has uh, been tormented. And he has uh, carried his cross as far as his flesh body can possibly carry it. And they've asked... Uh, Simon of Cyrenian to, to carry his cross for him the remainder of the way, but picking it up with verse 27, and there followed him a great company of people and of women which also bewailed and lamented him. 28, but Jesus turning unto them said, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. 29, for behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, blessed are the barren. And that goes right back to Isaiah chapter 54. Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. 30, then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. And this is because all those who have spiritually been to that that great wedding feast of the false one and have spiritually uh, entered into that wedding bed, you may say that that uh, they when they look and see the true Christ coming in great power and glory, bringing tens of thousands of his saints and realize what they have done, they will be so ashamed that they'll just pray for the rocks and the mountains to fall on and cover them and hide them from his face. The great shame of those who you may today, they are maybe sitting in a church, but they have not been taught God's word, have not received this warning, the shame that they'll, as they beg for the mountains to fall and cover them and hide them. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 18. <clears throat> and I'm going to uh, pick it up again with verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment uh, and sorrow give her because all the torment she has given us. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow, but she will. Eight, therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who hath judged her. Nine, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. And yes, the kings of the earth, you see all the world leaders at work today building and preparing for this great socialist system that they believe will be their great utopia. And they have actually set a date when they hope to have this prepared. And it's not that far down the road. It's a few years. But uh, pay attention and watch. Be watchmen. Let's read verse 10. Standing afar off, for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. I want to go to the book of Ezekiel because it is a second witness of exactly what we're reading here. You will see the, some of the same words and likenesses. Let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 27. And in chapter 26, uh, uh, we're not going to read there, but the, but the Lord uh, tells us of a, a, a great history of this area that was called Tyrus. Now in the Hebrew, that's tezur, like a T-Z-U-R sound, and it means rock. And that's the same word that we read in uh, the Song of Moses where we read 
that God is our true rock and their rock is not our rock. This is the same word that it's a name that Satan has given to himself. But there, there was a great uh, sit, uh, com- commercial system that Satan ruled over. And that uh, history has become our prophecy because it likens right with uh, uh, Revelation chapter 18. Now, in uh, chapter uh, Ezekiel chapter 27, uh, the Lord likens this great uh, uh, com- 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 this great uh, system of commerce, where the the kings and all the nations of the world are colluding. He he likens it to like a great ship sailing upon the people. And uh, so in this great ship, as we read it, this great ship of the false rock, the Tazur, uh, all the nations will put their hope and trust in the, in the riches of this one world system that we see be, be being built, even right now, putting their hope in the government and commerce of the false one. So the Lord does a great job of giving us this likeness of looking at this as a great ship sailing. 27 uh, verse 1, The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus. In other words, you you sing a a sad song for this false rock. 3, And say unto Tyrus, O thou that art situate at the entry of the sea, which art a merchant of the people for many isles. Thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrus, thou hast said, I am of perfect beauty. And of course, that's the, that's a description of Satan himself, you know, that he sees himself as that perfect beauty. We'll see those words again, uh, in not only this book, but, but in, in Isaiah, but the, the, where he mentions the, uh, the entry of the sea, because again, the sea here, just like in Revelation, represents the great masses of the people around the world. And the many isles, that means the many nations, many governments that he will rule over and all commerce will be done amongst all. And you know, along with the United Nations, you know, since World War II, as I've said, we have never had a decisive war since because the plan was to lock everybody together financially. And that's when those uh, four hidden dynasties really begin to take control, that great worldwide dynasty of the political, the governmental systems, how they have all interlocked, and that great system of the economy, managing the money. You know, I I remember as a child, my dad buying a couple houses uh, next to us, nice homes too, for like $6,000. The first house that I attempted to buy, I remember it was about five thousand dollars, a small house. But then later, you know, was uh, we were uh, working and, and and new subdivisions were being built. We were building houses for thirty thousand dollars in that neighborhood, and those same houses today are on the market for three hundred thousand dollars, and no, they will never be paid off. You know, if a young person goes and goes that far in debt they go into a form of slavery that will be with them for at least 30 years. I doubt they'll ever pay it off. But it, that is that financial system at work, that hidden dynasty controlling the money. Look how much it costs to do anything today, to go to the grocery store or anything. It is at work. And of course, the other part of that, those four hidden dynasties is the education system. Look at what the world is being taught. Look at what our children have been taught. And of course, that same hidden, those hidden dynasties have entered into the religious systems, telling all the, uh, the churches that organize churches what they can teach and what they can't teach. And so they no longer will teach the whole Bible. But it says here in verse four, thy borders are in the midst of the seas, right in the midst of the peoples, encompass all the peoples, Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. Five, they have made all thy shipboards of fir trees of Sinar, Sinir. They have taken cedars from Lebanon, 
to make mast for thee. Now, so these masts, that's what is going to hold the sails to propel this great ship. And as I said, God's using a likeness of a great ship for this great system of commerce. And uh, this uh, this area uh, of Sinir, it's like means great, uh, like a white mountain. It's in Lebanon. But I have shown you the how God uses trees to liken his children and the cedars of Lebanon are that's what God uses to liken to his even his children who have eternal life. So this is telling you that many, even those in church today, believers, will be deceived into helping to propel this great ship of commerce. They won't know because they have not received God's word. They won't know the difference. Six, of the oaks of Bashan, and so the, the mighty ones of the very fruitful place, so the fruitful place should be there right in the house of God, bear, uh, those trees bearing fruit. The oaks of Bashan, have they made thine oars. The company of the Asherites have made thy benches of ivory brought out of the isles of Kittim. And, and so this, this word, the Asherites, now this actually uh, is a bad translation, but it mean, it should be translated as the daughter's of the box cedar because in God's word Satan likens himself to a great cedar but God says you're nothing but a little box cedar you're nothing but these are the daughters of that box cedar this is telling you that these are the descendants of Cain that because uh, you know we, we read that Cain is of that wicked one Satan and so this his family is is right on board also these of Kittim, it means the bruisers. Now, these in time, we'll read about them, that they realize what is going on, and they turn, and they take a stand against the wickedness. But for a while, they're caught up in it, just like everybody else is. Seven, fine linen within, with broidered work from Egypt, that was that which thou spreadest forth to be thy sail. So all, you can see as we read through this, all the nations of the world will begin to take part. They're all on board in this great financial system. Blue and purple from the isles of Elisha was that which covered thee. This word Elijah, um, this is not the prophet Elijah we know, but it's the same name. And it means um, God is my Savior. But just as their rock is not our, is not our rock, their Savior is not our Savior. So the world believing that the anti, the instead of Christ, is the true Christ, they're, they're all on board with it. Eight, the inhabitants of Zidon and Arved were thy mariners. The wise men, O Tyrus, that were in thee were thy pilots. So these wise men, like prophets or the magi, that they are those who will steer this ship with his false prophets, giving that that brings religion into into this whole system, his wise men, his his prophets steering this ship. Nine, the ancients of Gibal, and Gibal is like mountain, and so and and mountains represent nations. So again, all the ancients of the nations are on board to see this great ship move. And the wise men thereof were in thee thy caulkers. Now you know what the caulkers are, like on a, a great ship like this, they would take strips of linen and dip it either in clay or zinc and, and hammer it into the cracks between the boards to keep it afloat. So these, uh, all the nations are helping to support keeping this great ship of commerce and deception afloat. All the ships of the sea with their mariners were in thee to occupy their merchandise. They're all buying and selling. They of Persia and of Lud and of Phut were in thine army. Thy men of war, they hang the shield and helmet in thee. They set forth thy comeliness. And of course, with a one world system, 
that, yes, that he will control all the armies. How can you make war against another nation if you're all one nation? And that's why it says that he comes peacefully and prosperously, only last five months. But yes, he controls even that. 11, the men of Arvad with thine army were upon the were upon thy walls round about and the gamma gamma dims. and that's that means like those those brave uh those men uh they're given their support to it like the the great the great men of the armies of the world they're in total support of this system they are deceived also they're right there in the towers they hang their shields upon thy walls round about they have made thy beauty perfect tarsius was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kind of riches with silver iron tin and lead they traded in thy fairs and like i said this is our prophecy this is a parable as a great ship run this great a system of commerce that we see being established today it's happening Javon, Tubal, and Meshach. And Javon, that's like Ionia today. Tubal, that's some of this, that again is descendants of Cain. Meshach, that's Moscow. And they, they were thy merchants. They traded thy, the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. And yes, the persons of men will, will see also the souls of men. Cause that's what it's all about. Satan wants all to worship him, and the world will put their trust in him and his great government. 14, they of the house of Togarma traded in thy fairs with horses and horsemen and mules. And this is part of that organized of the nations that Russia will bring when Russia comes against the great mountains of Israel. And that's not, that's not Judah or Jerusalem. That's the mountains of Israel. There is a difference. We've talked about that, and I'm not going to uh, read everything that they uh, that they bring to the table as far as trade. But I'm going to just read over some of the names in the verses for time's sake, just to show that the whole world is involved in this. The men of Dedan were thy merchants, and so these are actually descendants of Abraham by his uh, wife Keturah. Syria was thy merchant. Uh, 17, Judah and land of Israel, they were thy merchants. Yes, everybody is involved in this one world order. They're all deceived in it. Only a few of God's elect who have the word of God sealed in their forehead will be watchmen that will not be taken in. Damascus was thy merchant. 19, Dan also and Javan. And of course, uh, when Jan, when Dan separated from Israel early on, uh, they, and they, they established, uh, the, uh, great country of Greece. They were known as the, the tall blonde haired Greeks that we read about in history. Um, but, uh, and Javan, that's also part of Greece, uh, going to and fro occupied in thy fairs. Dedan was thy merchant in precious clothes for chariots, Arabia and all the princes of Kedar. Now, Arabia, that's uh, Arab, and it means like a the mixture of light and dark, and, you know, that's where that race comes from. And Kedar means the dark-skinned people, so everybody, every nation is involved in this. They occupied with thee in lambs and rams and goats. 22, the merchants of Sheba and Ramah. Verse 23, Haran and Cana and Eden, the merchants of Sheba, Ashur and Kilmed were thy merchants. Verse 24, these were thy merchants in all sorts of things, in blue clothes, embroidered work, and in chest of rich apparel bound with cords made of cedar among the merchandise. 25, the ships of Tarshish did sing of thee in the, thy market, and thou was replenished and made very glorious in the midst of the seas. And like I say, this is prophecy as this great ship of commerce that we see as the great merchants of the world are in collusion with the kings of the earth. 26, thy rowers have brought thee into great waters 
The east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. So this east wind, now this is a hurricane. This is telling you that God's going to bring this great ship down. It's going to sink. Thy rowers have brought thee into great waters. The east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. <clears throat> 27. Thy riches and thy fares, thy merchandise, thy mariners and thy pilots, thy caulkers and the occupiers of thy merchandise and all the men of war that are in thee and in all thy company which is in the midst of thee shall fall into the midst of the seas in the day of thy ruin. They're going down with the ship, every one of them are. 28, the suburbs shall shake at the sound of the cry of thy pilots. 29, and all that handle the oar, the mariners and all the pilots of the sea shall come down from their ships. They shall stand upon the land. 30, and shall cause their voice to be heard against thee and shall cry bitterly and shall cast up dust upon their heads. They shall wallow themselves in the ashes. When we go back to uh, Revelation 18, you're going to see much of this repeated, that the same thing, because this is a parable of telling us of what is going to happen. 31, and they shall make themselves utterly bald for thee and gird themselves with sackcloth, and they shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. Why? Because they are getting rich off the backs of God's children today. And they, they love it. They don't want to see it end. But, you know, we, we, when this comes down, when this is destroyed, there is a change. Like we're changing the twinkling of an eye. We're going to be in that heavenly realm. We have no use for all these worldly things. We have greater things awaiting us, but they do not. 32. And in their wailing, they shall take up a lamentation for thee and lament over thee saying, What city is like Tyrus, that false rock, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? When the wares went forth out of the seas, thou fillest many people, thou didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitudes of thy riches and of thy merchandise. Do you see that happening today? Yes, you do. 34. In the time when thou shalt be broken by the seas in the depths of the waters, thy merchandise and all thy company in the midst of thee shall fall. Again, everyone's going down with the ship. 35, all the inhabitants of the isles shall be astonished at thee, and their kings shall be so afraid they shall be troubled in their countenance. 36, the merchants among the people shall hiss at thee, and thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt be any more, never to come back. Chapter 28, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God. Now in this chapter, you'll see that, that this Tyrus, this rock, he's called the prince of Tyrus. But then we, if, you, we, if we continue to see, he's called the king of Tyrus. Because Satan, he is the prince of this present world. He is the prince. He's going to have his moment, those five months, as a king when he heals that deadly wound. So he will be known as a king during that time. He's had, had these other kingdoms, but the whole world will worship him as the king. So we're not going to go that far in this, in this chapter. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, the prince of Prince Rock, the fake rock, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am God. And as we know that it's said that he will sit there in the holy place claiming to be God. I am God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God. He's a nobody. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Three, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. And he is. He's very cunning. He is. He has knowledge, has wisdom. And that's why he was uh, called the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because that tree that had knowledge of good became evil. For with thy wisdom and with thy understanding, and we might say with thy cunning, 
understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. Five, by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches and because he'll have the whole world worshiping him. Six, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and, that, that, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. And yes, when Christ brings the tens of thousands of his saints with him, and that sword is the word of God, that sword of the Spirit, we, if we come, if, if you are one that comes with him, you will be partaking in that great victory. And yes, at this downfall of him, he is put into that bottomless pit for a thousand years. And then after that, released for a short time. And then after that, defining who can be, be deceived after a thousand years of truth, he will go in the lake of fire. He will die that death. So let's turn back to Revelation chapter 18. <clears throat> and let's pick it up. Um, I'll pick it up with uh, verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. And, and as we read this, you'll recognize some of what we read in, in the Ezekiel. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Eleven, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. No, we, we will have no interest in it. In that heavenly realm, all of these things mean nothing to us. Twelve, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. Thirteen, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. So, and you get that, the souls of men, the souls of many men will be bought with this merchandise, with this, just as, like I said, just as Nimrod held together the people as common bricks with the materialism, this merchandise, Men putting their hope, and that's one of the things that we read that uh, in the in the writings, uh, the other writings uh, outside of the Bible, that that Nimrod told the people, "Don't trust in God. Trust in me and my government. I'll take care of you." These are the same words that this one will be saying. Fourteen, and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. 17, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and this that they will stand afar off when this all comes down at the return of christ knowing that they have messed up 18 and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city is like unto this great city just like that great city of the false rock same words and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing saying alas alas that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour is she made desolate yes the desolate tor and his great government 
is going to fall. 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And finally, because as we as we read in uh, in that when uh, with that fifth seal, that those that are around the throne of God, saying, "How long, Lord, before you avenge her?" Those that have that have killed the prophets and killed your saints. So God is going to avenge her because of what she is doing to His children even today. 21, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And remember, the sea represents the people. He's bringing down this great city. And, you know, we talked about cities because everything on the planet does not need people. It can flourish fine, do great without people, except a city. It needs people or it will die. 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman or whatever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. It's lights out for this great this great city and great of government of this false rock and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee and think back when christ said it's going to be just like in the days of noah of giving in marriage and taking in marriage when because satan is bringing those fallen angels with him and there's going to be not only weddings to to those but also to him as believing that he is the husband he is the false rock. He is the false husband. It's all over for them. So, uh, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, and for by their sorceries were all nations deceived. And these sorceries, just seducing everyone with the materialism of this world, and believing in Satan as he provides and promises to provide for everyone. It is said that he comes peaceably and prosperously providing for everyone, but he can pull it off for maybe five months and deceive the world. 24, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. And so, yes, God is taking vengeance upon her for us. So we look forward to that day. So remember what he has said in 18, chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. How do we come out of her? With knowledge of truth, of the word of God. That's how we come out of her. And, and, you know, just as a... I had said that in a sense, we're all born in Babel. We're all born in confusion. But it is the word of God that brings us out of that confusion. Churches today are not teaching this book. They've been told, you don't need to know the book of Revelation. You're not going to be here. So those people will never hear or know this book that Christ has said, blessed and happy are those who read the prophecies of this book. So come out of her, my people. And so I just want to say that everyone listening, that it's so important that you come out of her. The first step is your personal salvation. If you do not know God as your Savior, you must take time and ask God and uh, repent of your sins. Repent of what part you may have had in any of these workings, these dealings, because the whole world is getting caught up in this and is supporting it. You know, I've even talked to, to Christians recently and talked about how the uh, the governments of the world have, have said, they, they set a date of 2030 that they thought they could have this all pulled together and um, and solve all world hunger and, and uh, uh, stop all wars. And, and I said, but it's Satan's government that they are building but you know i i had an answer 
that said, you know, if I really thought they could do that, I'd get behind it. And so that's how strong the deception is that a Christian would say that. That's why it says that even the Christians will be supporting this great ship, this great commerce system of the wicked one. So repent of your sins. Go to the Lord in prayer. He will give you salvation and wipe away, blot out all sins. And then um, you need to uh, receive believer's baptism. Get in a church that teaches the Word of God. Be prepared. Be watchmen for the times that are coming. Our Heavenly Father, we do love you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you have loved us so much, that you have given us this Word, that you are our great teacher, Lord, that you open eyes, that you open ears and make known all these things. And Lord, for any who call upon you this day, Lord, for that salvation, we know, Lord, that you hear them, Father. And we thank you so much for that, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that that all will come back again and, and gather to hear this word taught. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen.